or you work as a cop a civilian you know or imagine you are uh, you're trained to be a cop and then you work for a security guard in in a security guard in in walmart now or something you know, I mean, I mean, you can still make a living and it's uh, respectable, you know, I'm just saying that that not just because you speak English. I mean, you can you can teach it. No, it's it's, it's not like that. I mean, I respect my, my profession so much that I and I love it so much that, you know, I that feel I, that I caused that I caused uh, some havoc. <laughs> No, because because the, because people started saying like, oh, but what you got against people that work in a call center? Nothing. I've worked in a call center before. And it's fun. You make good money too. You know, it's just that a teacher is a profession. Working in a call center is not. You know, that's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not ready for the for the for a profession, you might take any occupation. I'm sorry. I'm just too raw. You know, sorry. You know. <laughs> anyway, so we're not going to talk about that, which we already did. We're already live. This is. Um, let me see. Let me let me show you where we are. Okay, it's right there. Saying it. This is a live podcast for teachers and advanced students. Okay, so you might as well just subscribe to the channel, and we'll be happy. If you don't, we'll be unhappy. So don't worry about it. So today, uh, we have uh, what. We have special guest and one of them, you know, it's her second appearance in the show. So I'm really happy to have her on board with us. Very good. So her name is Shareni Murillo, is it? Yes. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good, good. Thank you very much. You know, and our second special guest is Vanessa Arriaga, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. Good morning. All right. And uh, like it or not, we also have, you know, our specialty language training representative. You know, his name is Oscar Cruz. Good morning, guys. Thank you, Cam. Thank you, Vanessa. And thank you, Shereni. Thank you, guys. All right. So let's pick up from last week's topic. Okay. L last week's topic, we were talking about um, how, what was the to what was the the topic? Oscar, you it was uh, breaking down mental barriers, even though I came in for like four minutes. But yeah, it was breaking down mental barriers. Right. And we gave several uh, examples. I talked about uh, a, a day I had a I had a lady crying because I was forcing her too much to produce the sound B, you know, and she, she couldn't, you know. And later on, I found out that that her husband was in the hospital. Uh, dying from cancer, so she was stressing so much, and I was such a jerk not to be sensitive enough. Yeah, to, you were, you know, you know, because I was young, you know. Though I learned, you know, and and I became a little bit more sensitive towards students, not the teachers. Anyway, so <laughs> Vanessa, maybe you can give us, you can share experience with us where you, when you had that, that situation where it was a challenge for you because the person, you know, was blocked, like mentally blocked, like they couldn't learn for a, either a physical, we, we talk about, about, uh, you know, blind people. We talked about, uh, people that be, think they're old and they can't learn. So these, they have this attitude. So Vanessa, why don't you start, uh, by sharing, uh, you know, probably experience you had in the past you know, that you have to overcome? Well, I think probably one of like the more personal experiences is with my mom. My mom has lived in the States for 35 years plus, and she has struggled getting over her fear of her accents or being made fun of when she speaks English or not understanding it 100% and, and then fearing judgment of some sort. And so, over the years, uh, when I started to understand different ways of being able to make someone a little bit more comfortable, uh, losing fears, and just better ways of teaching uh, different things, not just English, uh, I, I have tried to let her know, you know, like the, the knowledge is there, you already have all of those basics, and the way to get through and, and progress some more is to actually start to speak it and, and to feel 
comfortable with it and forget about the accent and forget about any other kind of fears that other people have placed in your mind. Uh, ultimately, the more you speak it, the more comfortable you become. And that's how you're actually going to get to the deeper levels of, of learning. And it has helped her so much to get that kind of encouragement. She definitely has improved a lot in recent years. And now she's having fluent conversations with coworkers and she works at an FBI office in a courthouse, a federal courthouse. So she comes wow. home with stories from the FBI agents and they send her little notes. And I see that she has developed friendships, like true friendships. And so okay. that makes me happy to see that. Sometimes just encouraging them to get over that mental block of the judgments and the fear of it that sometimes doesn't really exist. Um, that that can be really the. And what do you think happened? Through. How do you think she made that that shift? I think it was the the fact that I repeated to her, you know it, you know this, mom. Like you have it there. It, it's just ready to go. It's you forgetting about what people may say because ultimately you're in, an, in another country that wasn't your own and you've learned their language. Like you are so much more smart in a way than the average person who knows one language, you know? So you've come such a long way. You've learned so much about another culture and how to live in someone else's country and you've made it your own. And now the language is this barrier that you just want to overcome and have this fear and it, it's not founded, you know? I think okay. saying it enough and her understanding that it was true, you know, she had all this knowledge in her and, and she wanted to do more with it. Eventually it just clicked and she just started doing it. And and honestly, I noticed later on when she was having these conversations with her coworkers that she had made it to a whole different level on her own. Okay. So you made her feel like a champion as she is. Yeah. Encouragement. All right. Encouragement. Okay, good. Okay, before we thank you for sharing, Vanessa. Thanks a lot. Yeah, you very know? personal. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. And uh, before we continue uh, with Shareni, let's let's welcome Nissan. How are you doing, director? Oh, thank you so much. Hi, I'm sorry I'm <laughs> late. I was uh, wrapping up my class. Vanessa, nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us. Shareni, nice to see you again. Thank you for joining us once more. Okay. So FBI, Good. did I hear that? What did, what did I miss? Yeah, don't get scared, man. Don't get scared, all right? She <laughs> works at the federal courthouse, but she's not an FBI agent. We're okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> so, so Shareni, can you share a story like that? Well, it's not about an FBI agent or anything like that. It's just like a normal class, I think. <laughs> but okay. yes, I, I remember when I just started being a teacher, there was, um, I, I worked in a language center. So it was like small groups with different people from different ages, and they were all together in a classroom depending on their levels. Now, so I remember I had this group where there was a girl, she was 12 years old, and then I got this couple of grandparents who were, I don't know, um, 74, 70 something in the same classroom at the same level. They were beginners. Uh, so uh, at the beginning I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? Because they are like very different in behavior and ways of thinking and everything. So I just made them like work all together. You know, we were like, okay, we're different kind of, but right. we're in the same level. So there is no bullying allowed. We are going to be respectful. And the grandparents, they were very shy. You know, they were like, well, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> you know, they, they started to have this feeling of, uh, I don't belong here, no? But then okay. everybody else in the classroom, they started like, like, I don't know, like cheering them up. No, like you can do it. You're here. Or, okay, tell us why did you have this um, curiosity about learning English? And they said, well, because our grandchildren are in the United States and they don't mm. speak Spanish. So we got this um, necessity to communicate with them, but we would like to do it in their language. So they shared with us their motivation and everybody in the group just started to do it for your grandchildren. No? <laughs> so it was oh. like this part of motivation for them. 
And at the end of this course that it was about four, five months, they oh. were able, everybody, they were able to, to have these short, basic conversations, you know, but it was because wow. we all worked together as a group. So it was very cool. It was one of the, I don't know, I, I remember th that group as one of the most uh, enjoyable experiences I've had. Were so, you the only yes. teacher responsible? Or you share that, the group? Yeah, with, with that group, I, I was the only one responsible. So yes, wow. it was such an, an achievement for me. Now it was like, yay, we did it. <laughs> and <Okay>. everybody. <laughs> All right. Most of us work with adults and that was, you know, that was the case. But do you ever, do you guys ever work with teenagers or pre-teenagers that represent a challenge? For example, if you do, can you share with me the, uh, a tip on how to make a teenager or a preteen speak how can you encourage their you know their, their their speaking does anybody have a, a comment on that so it says no, no Oscar really. says, i've only worked with adults or with no. university students but not with teenagers ever nisa and vanessa do you ever have you ever had this when i worked with teenagers it was a uh, It, part of the school at an elementary school, middle school, but it was for dancing, not quite English. So I'm not sure if it's the sure. same. Reason? Uh, yeah. Well, um, I think it's not that different from 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 teaching adults in the sense that um, you you always need a. a a needs analysis process now you need to find uh, you, you need to find out what the student wants and also like uh like you know before the show started i was wondering like like esp like why would i uh, uh contribute to the to, to such a topic and i was thinking uh about this one detail like sometimes and i'll try to i'll try to link it to the to the teenager uh right uh, teenage students thing Sometimes uh, you are uh, you have a client, right, uh, with a, a, a specific purpose, which is to become proficient in, 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 their, in their area, right? And sometimes when you do your needs analysis uh, process, you know, you find out what the student needs to, to, to achieve and what the, uh, what the company requires, you know, this person to to, to To achieve, and sometimes you uh, you find out that that is not the same thing. Like sometimes the student wants to learn some other type of uh, of uh, English. Like the student doesn't really enjoy the material that you're mm -hmm. that you're using, you know, for the Boring. course. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, maybe you're working with a I don't know a, a financial analyst or something and 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 you go uh gather a bunch of material from harvard english uh harbor business uh, school.com and stuff and then when when you start your class you know, they're like teacher do you ever watch movies or something like so right. give me some case, light yeah and in these cases uh it, you you do have to uh pause there and 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 think how think about who your client is 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 the company hiring you to prepare their employees or is the student hiring you in order to improve their own english because uh you know and in the case of teenagers it's the same thing why is the uh, why is this uh, kid uh with you uh, trying to learn english because they're his his or her parents Okay. is having them taking the course or is it because they you know they 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 want to they, they want to understand uh, rap songs so you need to find out what motivates them what kind of media they consume and if uh and and and, and who you're working for are you working for him or are you working for the parents maybe the parents want it maybe the parents want the kid to to maybe the parents want to send the kid to 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 you know abroad you know to to study or okay now all right all right all right yeah for me it's always hard because they sometimes they just go hey hey hi good morning how you doing mm. 
Uh, so what do you do last weekend? Uh, I watched a movie. Oh, God, you don't want to talk. And most of, in most cases, they do have good English. They just don't want to talk. Or they just don't have what to talk about, you know? So, so teenagers are always a challenge. However, it's not really the topic this morning. The topic is English for specific purposes. I have um, a doctor student. I currently have a doctor student, you know? And she, she, she she's, she's a Cuban. <laughs> She's a Cuban, um, she's Cuban, but she studied her career in Mexico, right? Now she lives in in Miami trying to do this validation. I don't know what she calls yeah. it, uh, that she's, you know, she's trying to, you know, the being certified in the United States. She's taking these courses. She has a special name that I forgot right now. It's foreign masters. I don't know. You know, uh, whatever. You know, so now she hired me to have a good, you know, to have to be more proficient in the language, you know. However, sometimes I find it hard because I'm not really an expert uh, on medicine. You know, I can make her proficient and we can talk about things. But I think she is the expert in language, in the in in that type of language. In that know? field. In that field. Yeah, in that field, you yeah. know. So so what do you recommend me to do besides you know reading more um about medicine and medical terms? What would you recommend me to to do to handle this this situation with her? Wow. Well, I mean, if, if I can add, first of all, what, uh, where is she at? She a B1, B2? No, that's the thing, that she's already a B2, C1. Okay, so she's pretty proficient in the English language already. She's already, but she doesn't believe she is. Okay, and what certifications has she acquired to verify that or to confirm that? Uh, no, she, she, because if she's going to be in the U S and she wants to, you know, be a physician in the U S they're going to need some kind of certification to validate her English. That's a fact. So what does she have? No, she doesn't have any yet, yet. at least because okay. she is proficient in English. That's the challenge that, right. that she, she's good in English. I mean, she can speak, but she doesn't feel, uh, un, uh, like, like comfortable enough with her mm -hmm. English. So really, even though I know what she wants, I don't know what she wants. You know, I don't know how how I can help her. So maybe you have a something to add. You maybe I need help. Well, I mean, what what I wanted to add was sort of like what Nissan uh, said and a little bit of what Shadini mentioned as well. Um, before you get to ESP, or you know, if you are going to get into English for specific purposes, we we all know it's there, right? We all know it's there, right? Um, however, I think. Um, uh, Nissan nailed it. First, you need to understand, you know, if, if that's going to be for their development and their development professionally, you know, a teenager as well, are you going to be, you know, dominant in the language first? That's a whole journey itself, right? And I right. personally believe once you are at a certain level, B1, B2, then maybe we can say, okay, let's get into your financial development. Let's get into your medical or medicine development. Let's get into your engineering. Let's get into, you know, uh, piloting people who are pilots, but you first need to have a certain uh, uh, proficiency before you even dive into ESP, right? And I've seen lately that a lot of people are like, oh, no, you can dive into ESP right away and we're going to make you, you know, be a doctor and have the terminology when you are an A2. That's not happening at all, right? You might know the terminology. You might take a test, right, for medicine, but when it comes to putting that language into, into action, into practice, if you don't have the language proficiency per se, you're not going to, you know, fly by. So that's sort of what I wanted, you know, to add. I mean, first of all, if you say she is proficient, then definitely, man, you're going to have to take a dive into, I, I believe IELTS or Cambridge does have a, 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 a one for medicine, one for doctors, one for nurses. So maybe you look in, you can look into that and prepare with that, you know, and, and get her to, to believe in herself. All right. All right. Yes. Uh, there, 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 there are gui uh, guides like there, there, there are uh, publications on the matter. Right. Like, uh, like you have uh, English for science and technology, uh, English for social studies, English for, uh, and you do have these, uh, you know, these uh, 
material that you can that you, that you can you know probably find online uh the thing is that if you are like like uh a, a teacher that that you know happens to work with uh, within the esp area you know every now and then yeah uh yeah you 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 have to do your homework you have to do your research but also the the client the student or the company you're working for uh should i don't want to say uh, has to should provide you with authentic uh work related mm. documents and and materials you know every time i i i, I find myself like you know l l l you know helping somebody to uh you know, prepare for, I don't know, prepare for a, for a presentation or something like sometimes, man, sometimes, they, they, you know, these people are scientists. Sometimes people are, uh, so you, they, they, it's, it's, it's always better if they provide you with the, with the, with the texts, with the input. Right. Yeah. Like, this is what I need to know because they are, they are, they are already experts in their area. Right. So they are the ones who are supposed to teach you. Uh, what they what they want to what they want uh, to accomplish yeah. now if you are an esp teacher then you probably have a major uh, on 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 that uh uh discipline of interest. yeah yeah you're a lawyer and you're an english teacher so you work with uh, lawyers and that's that's your area and you, you are an expert as well so you don't you don't always need the client or the the or, or, or the company that you're working for to provide you with authentic uh work specific material because you already have it right okay and and what nissan's saying guys this is a trend that i've seen i i, I don't know if you've seen it on, on facebook or on the internet but there are engineers who have been you know in the engineering field for eight, 10, 12 years, um, they're probably a little bit more, let's say, seasoned engineers, right? So it's a challenge to find work. So what do they do? They start training ESP for engineers, but they already have the background, they have the language proficiency, and they focus. I personally believe for, uh, well, not Shareni and not Vanessa, but for us three that are here, the guys, us that are seasoned already, you know, th this could be something, Very you know, seasoned. that we can definitely exploit, you know, down the road. You know, you get into a field, you have the experience, you have the language proficiency, and then you focus and target that. But I have seen that in, um, in, in law, like Nissan said, in engineering and in piloting. These are pilots that retired. They speak English, but now they teach other, other pilots. So, yeah, that's a trend. Okay. Vanessa, do you have a comment? Yeah, I was thinking about how I've done it because most of my teaching experience has been geared to a specific industry, um, mm -hmm. specifically banking and the trucking logistics industry. Cool. And so I think that what I did was learn in reverse because English was my first language. So I had to learn what it was in Spanish so that I could kind of understand what the conversation they were trying to have would be. Wow. And so it became a, a teaching moment for me every time because depending on what specifically their purpose or their why was, which for example, with banking, usually it was how to speak to a, a US based client in a way where they are going to buy whatever I'm selling or they're going to understand what the, pro, uh, the process uh, banking terms would be and they're gonna trust me. That was usually the purpose. And so I had to understand wh how do you say it in Spanish in the way that you feel that you're getting that point across with trust mm -hmm. so that I can learn it and now efficiently, you know, get that across in English as well, not just tell you what I would say, you know. So oh, that has been right. really what I have done is, is learn in, in reverse, teach myself the way that the student is thinking and the way they would speak it from their heart, you know? And so now I can really convey what you're trying to learn. Very interesting point, a very interesting approach. All and right. this goes hand in hand with breaking barriers, right? Because you're putting yourself in uh, the student's shoes, right? Yeah, and I mean, really, we're always learning. I mean, there, there's always something new and, and there's so many new things I'd still like to discover about the Spanish language so I can 100% put myself in anyone's shoes when they're trying to learn a new language. Uh, but specifically when it's for something for your day-to-day -day life, whether you live in a country where this is the first language or if you're uh, 
business reasons, you know, require you to have a more proficient level of English, I can 100% understand putting myself in their shoes with Spanish. Okay, got nice. it, got it. So, Danny, you have a very comment? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm uh, like very amazed about Vanessa's story, like background. <laughs> it's very interesting right. the way that you, you've you developed you know, this uh, language acquisition, but in reverse, as you said. Um, well, regarding the, the English for specific purposes, um, I have uh, worked, you know, I work at UNAM in, in Leon. So um, we have given these um, business English courses. But whenever we do this, we go to the businesses, I mean, to the industries, the companies, and all of this, and we present them our um, framework, no? like our, what do we offer as an English course for business? And then we ask them about their necessities. So this is something about what teacher Nissan was saying, no? like you have to, to get all the information together. And then with this information, you are going to create like the, the thing that you, they are going to need or these general uh, background that you are going to offer to the business, to the company, but then not only for people who are hiring you, but to the students now, because in these cases, they are going to be, well, not only a student from, I don't know, elementary school or secondary school or this, they are already professional people in here. So they are not going to have the same amount of time as just a student. For example, they are not going to have all the time of the world to, to do homework you know, or do a project or things like this. So then you need to adjust to their necessities, but then at the same time to cover the program. You know? It's like, okay, this is what we are going to do and this is how we are going to do it. And you need to check that it is actually working. You know? So yeah, it's like uh, a scaffolding about everything in here. Yeah. So it's it's not difficult, but I, I might say that it is a challenge in here. Okay. And taking on, on what Oscar was saying and mixing it with all what are you all guys saying, um, imagine you have this student, because I've been in that position, and you have this student that hires you for for specific purpose. However, they don't meet the level yet. How do you explain them that they need to get to that level first? Because they want, no, I want business English. Yeah, but you're an A2. How do you explain them that they need to to go through uh, um, you know a system you know in order to reach that level they want? Do you only I mean do you only base yourself on business examples to teach them basic grammar or basic structuring or how do you deal with this? Maybe you've been in this position, Vanessa, that maybe you have these students that are already executives. And they already need hire you for that, um, you know, purpose. However, they don't have the English level yet or the proficiency enough. Yeah, I mean, sure, I could always give them the simple translations of words that they might be looking for. But I think what I have explained in the past is if your purpose is to gain someone's trust for business, it's going to be more so through the conversation and not just the terminology. Mm -hmm. So if you have the words and you're using them incorrectly or you're just not communicating because you're not getting across to to your clients the way that you wish you would, it's still going to not have the effect that, that you wish, you know, you want. So just trying to get that idea across that if you can have a, a basic conversation but you can have it fluently in a way where you're actually communicating and you're and you're getting a response, a positive response from your client first before you get to the financial terms, then you've already gotten quite a bit further than you would have if you just throw out the terms, you know? Okay. That I think it eventually breaks that wall down and, and makes sense because it's the same thing in any other language. So in Spanish, it's the same thing. And I can try to give them an example. Like if I just come out and shoot terms the words that i've learned and, and no conversation and no kind of common ground with you then of course you're gonna not want to do business with me so which, that sometimes works <laughs> which leads me to the question is english for specific purposes only terminology or is it 
part of the language or what is it really? Oh, man, you know, because, make, because you're making it fun now. You're making it fun now, right? Boy. Because that's the way that's that's why I took the doctor student because you know I I said well I mean medicine or you know medical terms medical terms are just medical terms but it's not like medical English was I wrong is it the right is it the right approach do you have something to does you know anybody has something to comment on that well it, it well the, well the fact that it, that 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 it, that it has its own term you know it's all an abbreviation it, it it's really to uh, to 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 kind of uh, make a difference between English for general purposes and the methodologies you use there, and the time that usually students have, you know, where they're just uh, trying trying to acquire the language, in in in. So and the methodologies you would be using, yes, English for specific purposes, talking about, for example, banking. It's not just let's talk about banking or let's talk about finance. It's not just that. It's a special um, way it, of it, teaching. It, it, it sort of is because, for example, you have this you have this uh, subset uh, uh, which is called, uh, for example, restrict uh, uh, restricted language. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes the person only needs to work with commands, you know, with very specific chunks of of of, of, of language, you know, whether it is a waiter. You know, and 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 it's gonna be using fixed structures with 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 a couple of variables. You no, know? like for example, good mm -hmm. variable. You know, morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, well, uh, like to order with the know, menu. Yeah, table four and the variable two, three, ten. So uh, you're not. It, it, it's 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 uh, it, it, it's. Maybe not that different from a, from from a, a standard uh, ESL EFL class, but it is different. Like the method, at least the methodology is different, and and you you really have to stick to a uh, to a time frame, also because sometimes okay. you are you are given a specific uh, a specific deadline, you know. But I, I'd like to add what Nissan said, Rena, um, to your question that you answered, uh, Cam. Is it? Well, of course, it's it's. Uh, I would say eighty, ninety percent terminology, right? Because it's specific. The name says it all, right? And the the example that Nissan said is a great example. So if you have a waiter who's going to just be giving commands, and this is this goes for our, um, you know, our 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 fellow citizens that live in the U.S. that are being waiter, you know, waitresses and waiters and going out there, they don't take a course in. Oh, let me see English for specific purposes to become a waiter. No, man, they go there, they get a job, they listen to the phrases, they memorize them, they repeat them, and they go out there. Is it for specific purposes? Yes, it is. It's a service industry, restaurant industry, right? Hotel industry. So yes, it is. And I would say they kill two birds with one stone, right? They might learn a phrase, they might memorize a word or whatever. Grammar, syntax is already in there. But yeah, they're basically just learning terminology, man. That's all it is, you know? So um, how do you learn it? How can I help? That's a whole different story, right? That I think all of yeah. us can contribute to it. And, and the content of I'm sorry. Or, yeah, that, my last thing. That, and the content of your class is going to be different. Like, because for example, if yes. if uh, if you are a two yes. and you need to learn the present exactly. perfect, like if it's if it if it's if it's a standard ESL EFL class, then okay. So let's play uh, let's play this game. This game is called Have You Ever. Now, have you ever? And then you start, you know, talking about your life experiences. But if it's uh, ESP, uh, you're still going to be practicing present perfect but with uh, work-related context. Yes. Okay, so today uh, let's uh, let's play a game. And the, play, uh, the, and the name of the game is not going to be Have You Ever. The name of the game is going to be What Have You uh, Achieved Today? Or, or, or What Tasks Have You Completed uh, Today? Or what, what, what um, uh, I, you know, that, that, that's sure. pretty much my idea. Well, I, I, I hear you. Every week, but I never hear Shereni, so... <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I, I agree with, with these guys. Um, 
particularly with with teacher Nissen again, he he was saying something about the methodology that it changes, right? So yes, I do agree with him in this aspect, and I consider that one of the most important things when teaching English for specific purposes is precisely the um, the strategies that you are going to share with the students or with your executives or yeah, with the audience. You need to know the audience and their necessities, and then with these. Um, um, yeah, you know, this background, you are going to plan these strategies that you are going to use in the classes and for the learning objectives that they have. You know, not only they as students, but the company that are hi that is hiring you. So I think it's kind of different and it's not going to be that um, that different in the way that it's it needs to be dynamic no at the end of the day they are not there they would uh, if they were only interested in gaining vocabulary or terminology why would they get enrolled in a course no they can just get a dictionary or get for google and search the words but it's right. about the strategies the learning strategies that you are sharing with the classroom with the class and then how do they come all together in this final product that is i don't know a presentation maybe you are going to see okay now you are going to present that what is going to be your um work for this i don't know month or what is this pathology the pathology that you want to share about and then it's like putting this in context, I think it's one of the main ideas in okay. English for a specific purpose. Okay. I got it, I got it. So now, money-wise, you know, oh. is it is it worth it? Is it charged differently? Like, like I'm gonna teach you finance, so I need to charge you differently. Or me, I'm gonna I'm a hire a student that is a lawyer already, and I need, a, I need to hire him. Would he charge me more? You know, talking about money and like like that, is it worth it? Maybe Vanessa, do you have a comment on that? Mm. I know you do. <laughs> well, not with any specific numbers, but I do think that right. it's different. I think it does um, come with a higher price tag in the sense that you're not just teaching someone basic English. You're not teaching them greetings anymore. Like this is something more advanced and with more dedication, I would say, if you really want to get to a goal of a specific purpose, whatever it may be for that student, in a time frame, they're going to have to have a lot more dedication. So it probably will mean more of your time as well, more of your attention, more of your own research and, and preparation. Um, so to me, that would be just something more advanced and that goes along with what you charge and is it no, worth give, it give, for give, us no, give us numbers vanessa where the money at? Yeah, she doesn't want to say oh, now, cam let me add this though see you you have the flexibility of being a freelance you know independent esl person in shareni's case she's in a in a school there's a program there's a syllabus you have to follow it so you, you can't get too flexible either right and i think we've both been there we or at least i i think i have nissan you know a uh, cam probably vanessa and shareni as well so that that does change, you know, your situation when it comes to pricing because an institution have they have already done their business, you know, research and the market right. research, and they know what they're going to charge, and that's it, you know. In our case, independent freelance teachers, well, then we could be a little bit more flexible and negotiate. But then that that also brings us to the next problem we have been talking about for the past couple of weeks is that nowadays, man, you have someone charging five, five ten pesos, twenty pesos an hour, dude, for an English session. And right. and oh man, so that's a good question. Uh, is it worth it for a lawyer? Is already a lawyer to become an English teacher for uh, for lawyers? I mean, if they charge fifty dollars an hour, of course, <laughs> hundred dollars an hour. Yes, is he gonna find? Is he gonna find the the niche? Is he is he's gonna is of he course. gonna find the market? I guarantee you, he will find the niche, man. All around the world, Among you will find peers, the niche for probably. different professionals. Yep. Okay, so so it's still worth it. It's not just uh, so, but, but what's the right approach? Uh, an English teacher becoming a uh, teacher, a teacher for specific purposes, or uh, an expert in that purpose becoming an English teacher. Which do you think would be more right? Mm -hmm. you, you understand? This is it making any sense? What I'm asking? Maybe but not. Is, but I, 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 
think it might be, but I think that's. I mean, uh, is, is that, that right? if, I'm a, if I'm a lawyer, <laughs> we're all like super quiet now. No, it's like, yeah, I mean, uh, we haven't uh, gotten uh, that far now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're not there yet, bro. I mean, you know, you want to. I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. You're basically asking us, hey, should I go study I'm law? You know, that's what you're <laughs> yeah, asking. I, I don't oh, think man. it's worth it. I that's up to you if you want to study law, right? <laughs> As an English teacher, you might because you want to broaden your 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 skills, you know. But as a medical doctor, you know, like becoming an English teacher, I don't know about that though. Yeah, but the thing you is know? that the thing is that like, <laughs> okay, okay, your own. Uh, are you interested in law? I might if if there's uh, you know. okay, so then it might be worth it because I've, you know, I I I really couldn't come up with numbers right now, but I've heard about uh, the rates, you know, for for you know translators and and, and mm. you know, for legal yeah. translation and and not, and, and not coaching, bad. language not coaching bad. and stuff. That's and, motivation. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You can you you can make uh, big bucks doing it. I like debating but, and arguing about it yeah we know yeah, that already <laughs> yeah bro but that's not that's not law but you that's might just yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you might right. be interested in in, in in you know like uh yeah in 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 in, in pursuing the career you know so okay no nah, not really i was just i was just playing all right so uh oscar tell me uh, if you were, I mean, to because I think you you do teach, no, for uh, for for specific purposes. If you were gonna choose, you know, something to teach specifically, what would that be? I, I, I've done engineering and IT, right? Because of the background, the experience that I have, and I feel comfortable with that. So yes, I have done it. Um, but for companies, right, who already have employees in that company. So it's, it's not like, Oh, I'm over there looking for my clients. You know, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's employees are already in the company when I was working, you know, in, in TCS. So yeah, I, I have done that before, but I, I wasn't charging. It was just basically a project we had, we had to prepare, we had to do a program, we executed it and we had, you know, decent results. So that's the only ESP type of training I've done. Okay. Okay. What about you, Sharon? If you had to choose a specific purpose, what would you choose? Oh my, I don't know. I'm I'm also interested in these legal um, environments, but mm -hmm. I am not really sure because for me it's like overwhelming, you know, <laughs> like getting all this knowledge about law and jurisdictions and all of these things is like, oh my, I might get interested in that, but I don't know if I can handle it at that moment. <laughs> no. okay. So I, okay. I just stay with business English. I think I'm comfortable with that so far, so I'll continue with it. <laughs> okay, besides banking, Vanessa, what would you choose? Uh, I really have stuck to areas where I do have knowledge. So I, I'm a hairstylist as well. So anything that has to do with the beauty industry, I, I'm Ooh. familiar with. And the trucking logistics side. So I really have always stuck to the areas that I already have knowledge in because I don't want to give less to a student because I'm not 100% familiar with their field. So like you guys were speaking about the medical field, I have absolutely no idea and I wouldn't want to give incorrect information. And I don't know if I can research enough to know really in detail what they would need. But so I think I, I students? Yeah, but really as, as far as something very specific, when it comes to the medical terms, I have a very limited it. knowledge. And so I wouldn't want to overstep by at, at least advertising that I would know more than I do, you know, in those fields that I'm not familiar with. Oh. And that way I can be 100% certain that I'm giving them my best oh. and that mm -hmm. I really am familiar with the information that I'm sharing. All right, all right. And what about you, Nisan? If you were to choose specific film. purpose to teach. Film directing. Hmm. Oh, I, I don't know. Like, if I had the chance to choose what kind of ESP uh, training uh, to offer, I don't know. I guess I would. Uh, I would go for uh, you know, I don't know psychology or uh, political sciences. The stuff uh, I'm already familiar with. 
you know, because I enjoy reading about exactly. it and stuff. The, the problem here is that uh, usually you don't get to choose what kind of ESP training you're going to offer. So usually you always have to, uh, you know, do your research. All right, all right, yeah. all right. I'll go for, I don't know, acting maybe for actors. And actors, I wish musicians. I, yeah, musicians. I, I, I wish I, I would get into that. Uh, you know, that industry, but you know, I teach basics and, um, stu like, um, Spanish speakers in the United States. That's my niche, you know, people that live in the States and they already have the need to speak, but they, they don't understand, you know, but the advantage is that they are in the States. So basically, uh, you know, that's the advantage. They just need practical English. They need to have, uh, you know, a small talk English. You know, so you know. Yeah, right. I've had, you know, over I've there, had it's going to cost them fifty dollars, and over here, you know, it's you know, it's just cost benefit, man. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is it? Yeah, like, I, like yes, for sir. example, I, I remember, I, I remember that that uh, many years ago, uh, I helped some uh, actors, a couple of actors and actresses. Uh, you know, what prepare, kind of actors and actors? Prepare, prepare, pre prepare, not that kind. Of Comedy? Uh, Comedy. For, prepare Comedy. for castings. No, for because they, they, they wanted to go to to, to the, the U.S. Yeah, and and uh, mm. so we would be we would be reading their 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 the scripts. Script. Oh, cool! And That's I remember cool. I, and I remember doing some research about uh, acting tips. Because you know okay. you can't just be like, you can't just be like you know reading out reading loud stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 the student is like you know he's uh, preparing yes. for something it's, beyond that. Yeah. yeah. So you do have to you know get in there and 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 try to, to get the emotions and body yeah. language and, and try to match their emo yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> try to match their performance and stuff. But you know you did they hire you man? Did they hire you for a little role or anything as a stunt? No, but I've gotten to see at least two of my students actually get a part uh, on series. Like one of them is right now on a new Netflix series. And I'm like, oh, what? you know, I know you. <laughs> I know you. I helped you with this really. This was the director, but he and he kept. Uh... <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway. I'm just uh, kidding. Anyway, so you know, today was such a such an interesting talk, you know. But you know, everything has to come to an end. Oh, God. oh God. it's always like that. It's always like that. So, Vanessa, thanks for showing up. Thanks for coming. I mean, we love to have you back anytime. Maybe you have an extra comment for for the audience, for us. You know, Rolando was there from Paraguay. You know, Andre was here from oh, Indonesia, Indonesia, you know, Veronica was here from, we don't really know, but Venezuela, <laughs> right, you know, so a uh, last comment for the show, for the audience, for us. Well, I really enjoyed being here with you guys today. I've, I've learned a lot from you guys and definitely I'd love to, to join again and, and see what else I could contribute. Ooh. Thank you very cool. much. Thank you Thank very, you. very much. Okay, Shadeni, thanks for coming back. You know, so you have a comment yeah, for it's for been the show. such a pleasure. I am always having fun with you, no? <laughs> I Thank hope you. it was useful. Remember, I, I don't have that much experience, but uh, I will try my best <laughs> here. No, you uh, you do, plus oh. the personality you give to the show, you know, it's appreciate it, yeah. Well, yeah, that's kind of my, my personality. Maybe I'm not the best teacher, but at least I can make you laugh a little bit. <laughs> that's what I well, say about Nisa. Just this advertisement here, may I? <sighs> to invite you teachers to the MX Tiesel convention. Yeah, you know, Please. so this is for English teachers, international conventions. So, yes, if you are free, it's going to be in Puebla this nice. year. It's going to be November. So, yeah, uh, we, we would like to invite you. There is an official website, mextisol.org.mx. So in case you're interested, you can okay. look for further information there. Thank you. Hold on. Give me, give me one, one more. Come on, Pam. Come on. Work your magic. Work is, your magic, what is, it? what is it? What is it? It's I don't have a producer, man. I have to do it. <laughs> so it's so, Mextisol. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, dot, dot org. <laughs> dot org. Look, I'm making it up. Yeah, there you go. I, org. All right. Dot. How about you? Dot it's in the chat. Just copy and paste it. Work yeah. the thing. So yeah, in but case I can you do want. both things at the same time. There you so go. Yes, right. and here it is for for networking with other teachers. It's going to be about now. We are going to try social emotional learning which we consider is very important now. And there is going to be like this special section regarding the uh, coming back from new, to this new normality, you know, mm. these hybrid systems now and because of COVID and those things. So yeah, in case you're mm. interested, you can yes. attend wow. this convention. Appreciate it. Thank you. You already Thank know. You oh, guys. Vanessa, is there anything you want to, you know, add, advertise, you know, promote? Uh, not at this time, but I'm going to keep it in mind for next time. <laughs> okay. There a you beauty go. salon or something, just, you know, just put it out there. <laughs> well, I, I'm a freelance artist, so hair, makeup, and of course, English. Um, I can give you guys my Instagram if you want to follow it public so you guys can send me a DM. Awesome. So it's Vain, V-A-I-N dot. Sorry, say that again. Say that again. Yeah. V-A-I-N dot v a n e okay that's uh, an instagram right that's so instagram handle. yep that should be an at at the beginning on cam instagram. do you have uh do you have instagram already do i yeah i've always had instagram okay I'm, I'm just followers i one of them is my mom and the other one, one is asking. my other face uh, account nissan you have instagram too right Obviously, Charini was, yeah, was yeah, born yeah. with an Instagram account, Instagram. right? Yeah, yeah, she was born. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I do, but you know, I use it. You know, I only have. You'll only find uh, pictures of me in my pajamas. Right? Oh my God, no, forget it. So uh, you don't really. Want, I don't, don't really have wanna, Instagram. You don't really want to follow I, I, me. I have to get updated, man, with this new. <laughs> I have a MySpace. MySpace. Why did you do five. that, man? Jeez. High five. <laughs> Have a yeah. Sorry, Vanessa. Sorry, Shadani. He just oh, this he's, he's he just, just put his out there. Generational gap in here, but yeah, there's, a, there's a small <laughs> one, small generational gap. Couple of yeah. twenty years, you know. Okay, okay, Nisa. I'd, I'd never be embarrassed about uh, you know telling my age, but uh, telling people that I still have a MySpace account, <laughs> that's just embarrassing. Uh, okay, my final comment uh, regarding ESP. Um, I think that whether you're talking about English for academic purposes or for occupational purposes, uh, I think for me, uh, these are the three things that you have to keep in mind. Uh, who your client is? Are you working for the for, for the student or are you working for the company? Because if you're working for the client, you can be flexible and you can work on subjective goals, you know, and interests. But if you're not, and then you might want to stick to the to 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 the lesson to to the lesson plan which has objective uh, goals. Uh, the second one, uh, the second one is uh, you have to do your research because in ESP you can't really improvise. There, there, there's more room for improvisation in in a standard ESL EFL class. But if it's uh, ESP, you really want to know your stuff, and and that's it. And um, so two points. I, I had, I had no. I had three. three. Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, you can't limit yourself. Uh, you, regarding techniques and methodologies, anything goes, whatever works, because you 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 have to get the job done, and usually, uh, you don't have much time. Okay, man. All right. Look, Nissan, we were very international today, but there is saludos de vida aquí in whatever. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Jesus but, um, it's, it's an Italian word. Um, yeah, it's like saying um, porca la miseria. What am I? Yeah, <laughs> what am I? Oh, so... hey, remember, Shani speaks Italian, guys. Remember, <laughs> yeah. you do. Oh, oh, yeah. she, she speaks five languages, man. Remember, <laughs> oh, I, can't even speak my own. I can't even understand what I say. You can barely speak Spanish, man. <laughs> exactly, or whatever I speak. There we go. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. No. I can barely speak Spanish too, man. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, Oscar. Farewell. Oh, Farewell. Well, thank you for, for joining us today, ladies. Once again, it's great to have you guys uh, on board. You know, Cam is always um, open to having this just 
the bigger the better and the more people we have the better for us all for esp specifically i just think it's 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 a branch within uh the english language development to expand and you know be able to help more people but also it's a business approach right because you can you can have different products to offer but at the end of the day i agree with you know with nissan shade and vanessa just prepare yourself and do the best you can so that that person can obviously at least if they want esp they can at least you know apply that in their field of interest okay i sense you don't agree with me you only agree with nissan vanessa and Shred. no I, you i agree with you too man i, I, I think you know, this is your words you. bro don't don't worry <laughs> Yeah, I'm a neuro linguistics program. He's trying to fix it. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't agree with you either, bro. Anyway, so guys, plenty of respects to everybody. Thank you very much for showing, you know, to everybody that was, you know, just uh, checking our, our broadcast. You know, thank you very much for being part. Subscribe to the channel and we will see each other next Friday. Probably we changed the schedule, but we might, we will be here every Friday. And remember, uh, at eight you know every friday we have a conversation club free for everybody a free live a free conversation club for everybody that wants to come practice okay so we'll see you next friday invite students, right we can invite sure, students. if you want to invite students we are happy to talk to people and you know have a drink and whatever all right <laughs> so see you next see you next uh, week thank you very much bye bye thank you guys